Hello everybody and today is episode two of The Helen Show. I am really, really excited to have somebody very special joining today, very talented woman. I'm just going to run um, both on Instagram and Facebook, so nothing like a tech challenge for me, um, but I hope that uh, you can all tune in on both and we'll see how we go. So today um, I am chatting with Josie and she is the talented woman behind Event Entertainers, but she does wear a couple of hats. She is also a musician herself and um, the lead vocalist, I believe, for Duke Music. Um, so we're going to find out how she juggles these different businesses and um, find out a little bit more about the wealth of knowledge she has about the music industry, of which I know very little, apart from where we cross over at events. Um, so Josie describes herself as curating an in intimate stable of quality artists. She works closely with these artists and she's passionate about what she does. What a wordsmith. Um, so let's get her on the line and then we can find out a little bit more about how she does what she does. So I'm going to do my invitation thing. If I can get all this. And let's see if she, Josie, are you there? Can you join? on Facebook. Well, hey, look at this. Hey. <laughs> We're so technical. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> How many devices have you got in action right now? Um, I've got a desktop, I've got a camera, I've got um, Instagram going at the same time. It's, it's all happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what lockdown's good for, right? Just consolidating technology in your house. And well, I'm, I'm a little bit lucky because I've got Tim here who's also a videographer by trade. So behind the scenes, he's just making things come together. So a little, I'm a little bit lucky like that. <laughs> Shout out to Tim. Thank you for your help. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Bye. He's off to lunch. <laughs> your work here is done. See you in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Bye. <laughs> so good. So we um, have crossed paths at quite a few events um now and both weddings and corporate which is really awesome and i love how your brands cross over to the different clientele as does ours um and i was really excited to bring you on the show because i think our kind of mentality or our operating style is quite similar towards our clients and towards our i'm going to call them my team you're probably going to have a better more eloquent name for the people that you work with we'll find out about that so um a little bit to start us off First of all, I've got a little bit of this and that. So you just shout out what comes to mind and we'll find out what's in your head. Okay. Uh, it is 1 p.m., but I'm going to go with it. Margarita or mojito? Margarita. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, spicy or normal? Spicy. Yes. Okay. You've got my address. See you soon. Um, mornings or evenings? Mornings. Oh, interesting for a musician. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sure there's, a lot, there's a lot of late nights, but... I'm pretty religious about, about getting up and, and journaling every day, first thing in the morning, just to get it all on the page and then everything else can happen from there on in. Yeah, get the brain juices out. Yeah, I like it. Cool. Uh, indoor or outdoor gigs? Oh, <laughs> both are great. Both have their challenges. I think some of the wildest ones have been outdoors, so let's, let's go with that. And actually, we um, were both at a wedding uh, outdoors. Um, it was freezing. It, shout Christy. out to Natalie and Sam. Oh, my goodness. I think it was about four degrees. It was up in Wollombi in the Hunter, and you guys were performing outdoors. We got to go inside to kind of shoot some of part of it. But yeah, that was a nice yeah. outdoor experience for you. But you made it, and your voice didn't croak up or anything. So, no, yeah. we survived. It was, uh, it was a really good night, but um, very crispy. Very, very crispy. Very crispy, indeed. <laughs> indeed. And uh, last but not least, um, are you an instructions manual kind of reader or are you just like get in and have a crack at it? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, I, think I'm, I think I'm more of a get in and have a crack at it person and I'm learning to be more of a let's look at the manual just because I... I, I found myself wasting a little bit of time <laughs> trying, to figure it out, trying to figure it out on my own. Or alternatively, go to YouTube or TikTok and just get it yeah. straight away. Totally, yeah. I think the older I'm getting, the more I'm, I'm realising that there is some information in those manuals to be had. For sure. 
<laughs> so good. All right. Um, so we've got a few things in common. I was working out um, in advance of today. Uh, I see us both as kind of managers and artists in our own fields. So in our own sure. right. Yeah. Sure. Um, so for everybody that hasn't met Josie, she is a very talented music manager, is that the right title, behind event entertainers. Um, and she also plays and is a singer herself. And I've seen you DJ. So we'll pop that on the list as well. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Um, we've both been in business roughly seven years, which is a nice sort of um, era, I guess. We've seen a little bit of change and we've survived two lockdowns at least now. We're still here. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. And we both um, travel all over. So I've seen you perform in the Hunter, Fingal Bay, Sydney. Um, so we both cover that sort of New South Wales, wherever the fun times are, we'll go kind of idea. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but more importantly, I thought it was really great to flag that we have the same style of operating or the same attitude towards our clients and our business because I know that um, you love to really deliver to your clients and to put in the hard work and the research in advance. There's no cookie cutter um, approach and that's what we have as well. We love to, you know, become friends with our clients, get to know them and, um, yeah, know their favourite beer and coffee before the event. <laughs> as do you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I oh, love it used to love um, meeting our clients in person before the lockdowns, but um, we're, doing those, we're doing those, you know, Zoom vinos at the moment, but that, there's nothing yeah. like that right now. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Um, we actually shared a wedding couple, uh, Vanessa and Tim, and they pointed out as well that you had had the, the Zoom chat in advance and put in the, the good questions, even down to, you know, anything you should wear or not wear, which I thought was amazing from um, a performer's perspective because, or from the um, event attendee's perspective, because then you're not going to look like the bride by mistake or vice versa. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it'd be a faux pas if I turned up in a white dress. Um, yes. But um, <laughs> I, you know, I've, I've come pretty close to accidentally coming dressed in the same uh, colour as the bridesmaids, which was a little bit too close, actually. Um, for me, turned up in the same colour uh, and designer as the mother of the bride one time. Different oh. cut, though. It was a different cut Shona Joy gown. But, um, and we had a, she had a bit of a laugh. We had a bit of a laugh together, which was lovely. But um, I absolutely would, yeah, it would have been my worst nightmare if I had come dressed as the bride. <laughs> and yeah. and I, I just never want to do that again. I never want to run that risk. So it's always good to check in advance. <laughs> I see. I learned from experience. I like it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Awkward. Amazing. So I wanted to find out a little bit more about your unique approach to running a music management business. I know that you come at it from an artist perspective as well, which is great. You're not just that skanky old man that's telling their artists what to do. You are on the ground with them. <laughs> that's a compliment wrapped in an insult, I think. Um, <laughs> So can you tell me a little bit about why you started Event Entertainers and what you do? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, I've worked as a performer for quite a few years. Um, I studied in musical theatre and I was a dancer for a long time. We should do some tap dancing together maybe. Yes! On one day. <laughs> Um, and um, I've travelled the world. I've travelled to Japan, worked as a vocalist over there. I used to work for the Wiggles. Um, I used to work for Jelly Bean Jam, who are a really well-known um, cover band here in Sydney. Yeah. And um, all, the t all the while, whilst I've been working as a professional performer, I've always had a day job. So um, working in either arts management or arts marketing. So... Um, I had a job working for Dendy Cinemas for three years. Um, I worked at Riverside Theatres. Um, I also worked in a producing capacity for um, an experiential marketing company. I also worked for a children's entertainment company. Um, I've, got, I had, I've always had that sort of managerial experience. Um, I ran a, you know, helped to run a, a couple of different drama schools for a few years as well. So my experience is quite, is quite broad, um, yeah. but all sort of around the performing arts and, um, and in, in the, in the sort of latter few years of my career as a performer, I, I decided to, to really consolidate my knowledge and experience by studying entertainment management. And, um, and that was really, really rewarding and extremely insightful and um, made me really, connect with my purpose because I, I didn't realise how passionate I was about 
artists and creating opportunities for artists and, um, you know, fighting for artists' rights and, mm-hmm. um, and you know, and a- acknowledging the, 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 the gift, I guess, or the skill that I had in, in that field to be able to do good work. And um, it was really just a natural progression for me to take all the skills and experience that I had and to create a business like event entertainers, which um, you know, where I could really hone those skills and, and do good work for, for other really wonderfully talented people. So I'm really blessed to be able to do what I do. Yeah, I love it. And I love that you've brought together such a breadth of experience. And you must have seen so many different events, so many different platforms, programs, stages to, to find that right connection. It's amazing. Yeah, um, yeah, and- Absolutely. Yeah, and it must be, I mean, I love learning from the photographers that we shoot with as well because we have a team that come and work under the Magnetic Shots family banner. Um, And you're probably the same. You probably, like, get inspired by the musicians that you're working with. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, gosh, it's, it's, yeah, one of the great joys of my of my business is being able to find those artists that just have that spark and, Mm -hmm. um, and just listening to my intuition, I know that sounds kind of wanky, but you know, you, you know, you know, when you see or hear something, which really, really, you really connect with, um, you know, it's for, it's for us, for Tim and I, it's the same, you know, it's, it's having that, that spark and going, oh, wow, that's, that's something really magical. That's something that's really special. Um, you know, let's have a chat to these people and let's, let's, speak to these artists, let's work with them. What do they want to do? What do they want to create? And, and how can we work together with them um, to share, you know, their good work with the world? Amazing. Without revealing too many trade secrets, how do you find most of the artists that you work with? <laughs> um, or is that like, oh, I can't reveal? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Um, it's been an interesting, you know, journey, I suppose, for us as a business. At the beginning, it was like, okay, well, you know, I have a friendship circle of artists that I know that are really good and I want to work with these people. And um, and from there, it's grown to, you know, us being approached by artists who want to be represented by us because they've heard good things or they know one of the artists that we worked with or, um, you know, or I've had clients who said, oh, I've got this, you know, amazing artist who doesn't have representation. You should, um, you should, you know, find, here's their stuff, check them out. Um, you know, we've gone, we've approached artists that we really like um, to join us. And we've also run auditions before as well. Actually, we do run auditions okay. fairly regularly. So, um, so there's, there's, yeah, a few different, a few different ways, but um, ultimately, you know, we, we're pretty selective about the artists that we want to work with. Um, you know, <laughs> as you know, working in the advanced industry, it's, um, it is definitely a unique beast and um, <laughs> requires a, you know, a pretty committed and solid work ethic to, to, to deliver, um, you know, good quality work um, on the reg. Um, several nights, you know, several nights a week and, you know, many, many, many weekends of the year, um, you know, midweek as well. So um, for, for that and many other reasons, we are pretty selective about who we, we choose to work with and um, we're very, very lucky to, to work with some really excellent artists. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can totally agree with you that, you know, you need to be very selective and we're the same with our photography crew um, because you can't, <laughs> you can't just miss an event or stuff it up it's not going to happen again it's 100 percent every time or job on team so yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. so I you've mean, got this amazing well, pool of artists and yeah. you know their styles and work and they're probably evolving under under your nose all the time how does that go to fitting them to the right event what's the formula how does how does it work uh good question so really my job is to mine this information on behalf of the artists and and on behalf of the clients. Um, Otherwise, I wouldn't be paid to do what I do. So um, really getting to know the client um, or the event planner, I should say, um, and asking them, you know, who who are the people, who are the guests that are going to be there? What's their age? What's their demographic? Um, What sort of business, you know, what kind of business are they in? Um, you know, what are they celebrating? Um, how, you know, what are the logistics of the event? Is everyone going to be up on their feet or is it going to be a dinner or is it, um, you know, getting to know those finer details of the demographic and the t- type of event 
um, are really critical to be able to navigate um, the the plethora of options of artists and being yeah. able to make sure that we place the correct artist with the the right event. So, um, you know, it, it can be all very well and good that, um, you know, a particular artist has, you know, dazzling promo and um, looks really fancy and is well-priced and so on and so forth, but they might just not be very well suited to the people who are going to be in that room and to that particular event. Um, and it's just my job to know intimately each of our artists and, and what they're really good at, what, you know, and what equipment they've got and mm. um, how they look and the vibe that they communicate when they're performing um, and, and how much they're willing to get out of bed for in terms of their fee. And, yeah. Um, and yeah, to know those things intimately to make sure that we're, we're putting them in the right events for, um, for our clients. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause you can't, yeah, you can't be sending someone who's too grungy to the, clean cut gig and then the dance floor is empty it's not gonna it's not gonna work is it <laughs> <laughs> That's my... yeah it's yeah you you, you kind of got to you know square square pegs and round holes like you know we've you know I want every one of our clients to have a successful event and similarly I want each of our artists to have a great day at the office um yeah. there's nothing worse than you know coming away from an event and just going oh you know no one, no one, like no one was listening and everyone just ignored me. And, yeah. you know, I, I don't, I don't even think anyone really liked the music that we played or, you know, I mean, that's just such a horrible feeling and no one really wants to be there. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So it's, um, it's kind of critical to get, to, to get those things right. Definitely. Actually, something I was going to ask you later, but I'll, I'll bring it up now. So I love to um, refer to something I've been pondering at the moment and lockdown's a great time to ponder, let's be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I am pondertastic. Um, I've been pondering at the moment about success and um, what what's going to make me, uh, when am I going to decide that Magnetic Shots is successful? Um, and so that's a really uh, good spin-off, I guess, from what you were just saying. How do you decide that the, the gig, let's call it the greater gig of like placing the artist, the, the whole story, has been a success? What's maybe your definition of that on a case by case ah oh, people it's it's all about people it's all about the guests i mean it's music is such an, an entertainment you know it's an intangible thing it's all about how it makes you feel and mm. the vibe and the atmosphere and you know i'm using all these beautiful lovely words but you know exactly <laughs> what i mean it's that it's yeah. that little like that spark like it's that little thing and it's really hard to capture on film or capturing words or describe to somebody but you know when you see it or you feel or experience it that um you love it you know and um and you react like you you know guests and clients will just turn around and go oh this is so good like love this yeah. or they're you know they're really vocal about it and they're cheering and they or they're dancing and they you know what i mean and and that and that like instant response is super valuable and is something that all of the artists really feed off you know that's 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 energy like that's intangible it's energy and that's something that 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 everyone just gets so much ju good juju from so um you know i think every artist will know whether or not it's been a good gig you know like because of that instant you know um response so um but always you know we, we follow up with our clients and we ask them how it all went and um, get their reviews and testimonials and um, and quite often they you know if even if I don't hear back from them they'll call me in a few months and say we want to book that guy again and I'm like great that's awesome like you know that's, that's a win <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah absolutely I think you nailed it with energy that that word on the tip of my tongue and it's actually the same when we video or when we do stills like there's just you can walk away and we'll be in the car on the way out of the, the event the wedding or the, the shoot and just be like brruh, brruh, and like our energy's up because Everything was just working, you know? Yeah. 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 Helps, Love of course, that. I good music while we're there. That's so helpful when we're shooting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially especially when you can party and, like, shoot at the same time. Like. Yeah, exactly. But what – okay, I've got a good question for you now. Yeah. Why – can you tell me why? An artist, a musician, a DJ, they go to the bar, they get a drink, a glass of red, swing on a beer, they're walking around and they look – Cool. Everyone's like, that muso, they're going to nail it tonight. A photographer goes to the bar, gets a beer, starts drinking a beer, and I look like a boot hound. 
You guys look cool when you drink, and we just look like drunkards. I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe you just need to shoot with one hand and drink with the other. Maybe <laughs> that'll. <laughs> if you get that down, then, then not, everything will be cool. It's not fair. <laughs> I'm coming back as a musician in my next life. I'll try and make it look less cool. Somehow. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Just maybe like drop your drink every so often or something. That'll help. Help us yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just straight down the front. Like, that's, yeah. yeah, I can do that. Yeah. No worries. So let's back up the track a little bit. Did you always plan to sort of merge performing and managing? Or uh, did no. it just happen that way? <laughs> <laughs> I um yeah no is the short answer um I did a couple of um I did yeah I I sort of I've done I've been working as performer for so long and I sort of like towards what I thought was the tail end of my stage career I did a couple of years with um with very well known band Jelly Bean Jam and um and worked so hard with them and had such a bloody good time um yeah. <laughs> but I was kind of really going you know diving into um arts management at that time and um super ready to to launch and um I yeah I, I sort of signed off resigned from Jelly Bean Jam and I was like cool I'm I'm done I'm gonna retire and this yeah, is it. Hang up up home. <laughs> you said I was home hang up my dancing shoes focus on creating opportunities for other artists and um and I had an artist a drummer approach me and say um hey really like your stuff and um come and join a band I'm starting a band come join a band and um and I said no um <laughs> that has no sound <laughs> I was tired I was like no I don't want to join a band um uh but he said oh look just come we'll have a business meeting and um, I thought, yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. I'll do it. I bet that. that's your and beer. I bet, you, I bet you if you're a musician, you get a business meeting with a drink, don't you? Well, See? It, was music, it was at a music school at the time. And we were, we were okay. talking about, because I also have, have been a teacher um, in the performing arts for a long, long time as well. Another stream of my career. Um, you can find all this on my fabulous LinkedIn page. Or yeah. <laughs> different <laughs> branches of my wild career. But yeah. Um, yeah, so it was at a music school, so no beer, unfortunately. But um, but I did sit down with him for a couple of hours, and lo and behold, um, I exited the what I thought was the yeah I exited the room, thinking that was the end of the meeting, and he tricked me into auditioning for a band, and there was a band set up outside like a surprise the party. like a surprise party, yeah. <laughs> and he said, "Well, Joe, while you're here, um, and the musicians are set up, you know, it would just be rude if you didn't." um join you know join us for a song and yeah <laughs> so I got tricked into into joining a, a band essentially and um and and the guys were really lovely that's how I met Tim my partner it wasn't all bad um and I said look I'll join your band but I want to run it and I've got pretty, pretty <laughs> specific direction on on how I want it to go and um and the boy said, yep, that's cool. And the rest is history. So I've got event entertainers and I've obviously got Duke working, both working pretty hard. Nice. And you're still not at home on Saturday nights, but one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one day, one day. Um, so, good. so that's um, a topic quite close. Oh, another oh, topic. Yeah. There we go. Tim, get on the audio. Sorry, someone's trying to trying to call me um oh. <laughs> yeah so look look duke's duke's just doing really well it's going from strength to strength so it would be um remiss of us to hang up the dancing shoes i think at this point in time particularly because events are going to be coming back with a bang yes. and um and all of the dukies in the band are chomping at the bit to come back and play gigs um after the last 18 months um mm. so yeah we're super keen super keen to get back out there Absolutely. I'm super keen to hear you again. And Ooh. I think uh, Duke is, I've seen Duke as a duo, as a maybe five or six piece, as a trio, a trio. Yeah. at a corporate event doing harmonies, and then you were DJing. So I love that Duke's got this flexibility um, to really mould into lots of, different, lots of different things. When events are back, and they will be back. 
Mark my words, it will be that. By the end of the year. Come on, you yeah. fat yeah. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. There will, be t- there will be time for these fun, like, LG lives, and, uh, uh, Instagram lives, I should say, yes. in the middle of the day. Like, <laughs> we don't have time for that. We're going to be working, working, working. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So working with your partner is something that I am all too familiar with, as everybody probably knows, Negan and I work together on magnetic shots. I would love to have maybe a tip or a trick that you have worked out um, over the years of working with Tim. You're obviously still very great as a couple and uh, business partners. What, what's something you can teach me in the world of working with your partner? <laughs> you didn't know this question was coming. I've sprung it on you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Tim and I are very lucky in that we've always been a really great team and we've always being great communicators and uh, <laughs> even before we were a couple we would um, that's we, Megan commenting <laughs> <laughs> we would you know we would talk to each other on the phone maybe like five or six times a day about work um, uh, and, and, you know but we've always had that as our strong suit but it's not to say that those communication styles are always um, harmonious so um, you know, Tim is a very different personality to me and I'm a very dis- different personality to him. Um, but, you know, a- 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 across the course of our business life and personal lives, it's been um, a concerted effort from both of us to be able to understand each other's communication styles and, yeah. and, and, and know that, you know, sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes you're running your own path and you forget and you kind of go, you go, oh, that's right. They don't, they don't, they're not in my brain. They can't read my mind. Like I, I've got so to lazy. Be, I've got to distill. I've got to distill what I'm thinking in a way that they, um, that they comprehend and that is, you know, and and that's sort of, you know, that's hard to do. It's not easy to do that. It's extremely challenging, um, but it is definitely our strong suit now and is something that keeps us together like glue. And no matter what happens, whatever you know, whatever kind of day it is, <clears throat> you know, or whatever mood or whatever, you know, happens, um, it's it's really now our default position to kind of whatever that is, to put that down and just go, I'm listening. What, what are we going to do? How are we going to deal with this? Like what, what's next? What's next for us? What's the next step? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, yeah, so I hope, that, I hope that's helpful. I hope that's insightful. Yeah. Um, it, you I'm know, hearing this whole body listening. Full body listening, yeah, get into it. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. And it's really grown-up stuff. Like, <laughs> it is really like adulting 101, but yeah. um, but it's so important. And if it's a really great relationship, be it a business relationship or a personal relationship or both, um, you know, it's worth it. It's, it's, you know, it's worth it to kind of put aside your own whatever, and go yeah. listening to this person or I need to be able to communicate to this person in a way that they're going to understand. There's no garbage. It's it's all about what we're dealing with here right now. Um, so, yeah, good luck. I love that. Yes. Megan, did you take notes? She's recording. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and it is tricky working with your partner because especially when you work from home a lot of the time or if you travel to work, you're travelling together, you know, there's this living, breathing, eating, shitting together and you're just like, hey, but how about I just have this little walk by myself and <laughs> then we'll, we'll regroup under this brand or under this relationship or under this household or, yeah. Absolutely. I can throw kids in the mix. That's next level. Yeah. <laughs> Can't parent together. No, too much. So good. <laughs> Um, well, we are uh, actually almost out of time, but I would love to um, get the the top tip, I guess, because I should have introduced the show properly, had the Helen show, and you're speaking to Helen the Generous. So I am giving away tips and tricks. Um, and today, Josie is going to share with us maybe your top tip on getting the best music for your event. Um, yes, yeah, so I think we briefly covered it earlier, but um, but certainly getting like knowing knowing your knowing the room knowing the audience yeah um if you're playing an event and it's something you know you've come across some entertainment or some artists that you really like that's good but you've also got to think about everybody else who's going to be in in attendance and it sounds really obvious 
but um, it's very easy to kind of go on a gut instinct of what just what you like and what you you think is cool or um, and, and that is going to work to a point, um, especially if it's a wedding, because you you know there's a very good chance that what you like, you know, your friends and family are also going to like too. But um, but if you're planning a, a function um, mm. and or, or a corporate event, you do need to really think about who's going to be there. What are their um, what are their ages? Um, what sort of business are they are they in? Like what industry are they in? Um, what you know? What kind of event is it? Is everyone on their feet? Are they going to be mingling and drinking? Uh, if we can do that eventually, after yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, or is everyone going to be seated? Um, and you know, what are what are the? Do you want something loud? Do you want everyone up and dancing, or do you want do you want something that's kind of a bit more demure and and backgroundy? Um, you know, getting to know who the demographic is that's going to be in attendance of the event and knowing intimately, you know, what the parameters or the logistics are of the event um, is yeah. really going to speak to what kind of artists you're, you're wanting to put into that situation or that event to be able to, you know, create the right atmosphere and vibe. Now, that being said, my job is to help navigate that for, for our clients so they don't have to do a lot of that that hard thinking um that's my job to do that um but if you don't have the luxury of working some with someone like myself um and you don't have that experience the artists that you speak to or that you work with if they are experienced they should be able to tell you whether or not they're a good fit uh -huh. or not yes. and you know like it's so easy for someone just to take your money but the reality is you should be you should ask them and they should be able to tell you hey yes i think we'd be a really great fit for your event we'll do this 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 and this we'll get everyone up and dancing we'll have everyone's waving their hands in the air and singing along and so on and so forth and we'll do audience interaction and you know and they they should be able to communicate clearly to you whether or not they're a good fit so don't feel like you can't be straight up and ask them. <laughs> like, they should, <laughs> yeah, they right. should know. They should know inherently who they're good for and what they're really good at, and they should be direct enough to, you know, to tell you that. And know to walk away if they're not. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, I know the allure of, um, of you know, working is very strong, um, but yes. you know, at the same time, at the same token, and I mentioned this earlier, like. You know, I don't think any artist really wants to turn up at an event where they're not liked or they're not yeah. being enjoyed. Um, and, you know, classic, you know, Duke, Duke, absolutely. We've turned down gigs in the past. We've just gone, we're just not right. We're just not the right fit for you. We don't play those kinds of songs. We're not really, mm -hmm. like, straight up, you've seen us play. Like, um, you know, we can do the love song thing and we can do folky, beautiful ballads and we can do some um, awesome, you know, old school 90s Tina Arena songs and stuff like that. They get everyone singing during dinner. But, you know, we – and we do rock out when we have the band and we love to party and yeah. do all these mashups and everything and everyone singing at the top of their lungs. But, you know, we don't do a lot of, like, pop and R&B and hip-hop, you know. That's not our strong suit. Don't, you know, don't know why. We're just – that's not really our style. But, you mm. know, who, just, who does that really well? Sexy Sunday Jam. And I'm so happy to go – you know what, we're not really the band for you. You should call Sex Sunday mm. Jam, who's their details. They're really good at that. And um, and they get everyone up on dancing on their feet and they play more of that pop, R&B, hip hop stuff, you know. But whereas we would, you know, we're singing Teenage Dirtbag at the end of the night. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've seen you sing that. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, you know, it's a little bit different. Uh, well, it's quite it's quite different. But, um, but those, you know, if, if you ask the right questions, um, you know, to your vendor, your entertainment vendor, or um, or myself, you know, we should be able to be pretty clear about telling you whether or not we think we're a great fit. Totally. And I I so agree with that in the photography industry as well. I just think, you know, if you're looking for that real, you know, boho, dreamy look, it's, it's not mine. It's too, I'm too bright and vibrant. Like, I don't even own white. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, you've, you've got to marry up. It's personalities in the end, isn't it? You've got to marry up both ends. We've yeah. got a quick question I want to ask you. It's come in from Anne-Marie, who was chatting on our um, Instagram live yesterday, actually. And she is a, um, a dance teacher. So she teaches first dances for weddings, um, everything from waltz through to a break dance. Um, and she said, are you able to send your version for a wedding dance? Because they get a lot of requests for live music to play their first dance. And I guess they, she wants to teach the couple to your version of it, not the recorded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in it does depend. It, 
depends on the artist really um, whether or not that is possible. So um, I'll use Duke as a, an example. Tim and I live together and I don't play an instrument, but he plays the guitar. So if a client of ours says, hey, can, can we just listen to a version of um, our first dance we're rehearsing with our choreographer, quite often Tim and I will be able to, to do that. And it'll just be a, you know, a demo version of it. It won't sound particularly crash hot, but it definitely gets the job done and, and hopefully is um, something that, you know, that they, they, they and their choreographer can use for um, for rehearsing. Um, not yeah. all of our artists have the luxury of living together though, so yeah. it's not always <laughs> possible. Um, but in that instance, the musicians that we work with, um, they replicate the original version of that song as close as humanly possible. Um, okay. If they're in, and if, you know, if it's a really wild, you know, version that has a big band and lots of instrumentation um, and they, you know, the couple want to have a stripped back version of it, we, we just get on the net and just try and find a version that, that has mm. already been created, like jump on YouTube, find an acoustic version of so-and-so song and, uh, and our artists will replicate that version as close as humanly possible in terms of the tempo and the style, just so there's no... Um, you know, there's no uh, surprises on the day in terms of yeah. um, getting their, their dance done. That being said, if, you know, if it's not possible for an artist, this is, this is my work coming to the fore here. If it, you know, if, if a couple picks a really great song, like a big buble tune, for example, that's not really easily replica, replicable by mm -hmm. you know, an electric guitar and a drum kit and a bass guitar and me. Um, and, you know, or if, the version that is recreated by the band is probably not going to sound as cool as the Buble version. We're pretty, I'm pretty straight up and just going, listen, if you want to dance to that song, you know, you might want to consider dancing to the original version. If particularly if you've got some really tricky moves and, um, you, you know, or if they're not really super confident dancers, um, then I, you know, I generally would suggest that to them that to stick with the original version because um, you don't want anything that's going to be too out there that you're not used to um, rehearsing to. And so that is often helpful as well, just kind of navigating mm. the, the different, you know, options or alternatives. Does that, does that answer your question? Is that helpful? Yeah, I, she said definitely. And, cool. and I think it's great that you come at that idea with dancing experience yourself because you can't learn a dance to a different recording and the tempo be so different on the day. And then especially if you're dancing with someone who's probably not a dancer, if they're mm. going to be your partner, and, you know, it, it could all go south real fast. I actually photographed a wedding and they had a beautiful swing band, really classy, really up there sort of alley and suited the guests, good choice. But the, the swing band played this song with a really different tempo and I could just see the couple struggling and they rehearsed and rehearsed, but it wasn't, they obviously hadn't rehearsed to the, like, the swing band version of it. And uh, it was a real shame because both were beautiful, but they just didn't pump marry up at the time. So it's probably a great idea actually to ask for the closest version the band can or the artist can provide before the day of the day. Yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. And, and just being realistic, you know, it's, you know, it's all very well and good to want to dance to a big buble song and to not have any dancing experience at all and think that you can get it <laughs> in, get your choreography down in like a lesson or two, which, you know, is, is, probably really tricky to do yeah. you know, dance experience. Um, you know, I would, I would think that, you know, inexperienced dancers will probably need, a, a, you know, a small handful of lessons at, at mm. least. So, um, you know, my, my job is to kind of work with the reality of, of their experience and, and what we can actually do as a, as a live band and what we can't do. And, you know, don't want to promise the world. I don't want to be that swing band that just turns up and just plays whatever and, you know, it turns into a bit of <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of garbage like yeah, that's yeah. Nice nightmare. so um if we can do a strip track acoustic version of it and pre-record it you know we absolutely will yeah i love it and that's a true professional like again walking away or like knowing what the options are for the client that's so helpful because especially <laughs> wedding clients it's they're, they're one and only time planning an event this size corporates might be more regular but yeah i i think that's really valuable to them Sure. All right, so we're down to our last two sections of the Helen show today. Oh, okay. First, okay. Yeah, here we go, here we go. So um, on Instagram this week, we are focusing on our wedding page on shoes. We're looking at all the different wedding shoes we've seen, bridesgrooms and others uh, wear. 
And I did ask you to maybe have handy your favorite pair of shoes. And I too have mine. People that know me probably don't even believe that these are my shoes, but these are my wedding shoes. Oh, they're unreal. Yes. That's so good. <laughs> I wanted multicolored and that narrowed the field down extensively at the time. So uh, yeah, these little, little ditties. I mean, I don't even really wear heels that often anymore. So it's a miracle to see that I wore those to my wedding with a red dress, but that's another story. And um, have you got a pair of shoes that you... Yeah. Oh, gonna... stop it. Okay. These are, these are my special sparkly shoes. Um, hopefully everyone can see them on... on, on fa I've got, actually got two, of course. Um, <laughs> but um, no. these shoes, I couldn't even tell you where I got them from because I was in such a hurry when I, when I purchased them. But... Um, they have, I've sung in these for years and years and years. And um, these have been my go-to, like, stage. <laughs> stage Go with They're everything. Not suitable for Duke because I tend to mosh on stage. I don't, I can't jump around in these as well. But, um, <laughs> but they did, um, they have graced the, the floors of the Star City Casino every Christmas when I used to sing with Santa's Angels. Oh, um, so also cool. a very popular corporate act. Um, yeah. And... and um, they've yeah they've been in the high rollers room. Um, oh yes, kicked <laughs> off at the end. And um, and they've also been uh, all over the stages uh, when I was working in Japan. So um, you know That's I'd go off. I I I'd like yeah wanted something really special to kind of like you know I don't know keep me confident and and yeah. and happy whilst I was because I was I was working over there um, on my on my own with the band but. Um, I was the only Western woman in this like country Japanese town of like 40,000 people. It was insane. But um, anyway, that's another, that's another part of the story. Yeah, but, that's um, another episode. I used to, I used to um, you know, wear these on stage every night and I'd, I'd go off stage and um, into the crowd and I'd sing to people and they'd give me oh. tips. They'd give me tips and I'd like sneak them in underneath my hand whilst I was holding my microphone I'd have all this oh. cash and I'd and then I'd go back to the stage and I'd have to try and sing and wave my hand around and carry this cash and handful of cash <laughs> handful of cash at the same time it was like such a wild time working working over there but yeah these shoes have seen many many stages so love yeah. it <laughs> and shoes are often kept, I think, longer than perhaps other uh, stage outfits and things. So they, those shoes have this whole, like, story behind them. Uh, that's fantastic. And you still got them. They're still shiny. Yeah. I don't know whether or not they're going to get another, you know, another wear on stage, but, um, but I just can't bring myself to throw them out. <laughs> oh, thank you for bringing them to the party today. Okay, that's thank so you. awesome. <laughs> and the last um, challenge or the last item today is our challenge. So... Part of the Helen show is to set me a challenge. Um, yesterday, the, the beautiful Anne-Marie from Your First Dance Co. actually taught me how to twerk. So that was an interesting um, dance experience. So is there anything in your huge repertoire of business, music, entrepreneurial skills that you think I could learn from you today? What have we got? I'll, I'll teach you a, a little trick which will hopefully help you with um, corralling um, lots of guests together to take their photo. I'm sure okay, I photographers yep. will, find, will find value in this. Um, yep. the, the, and, and, you know, big part of being a singer and a big part of your job is to not lose your voice, particularly if you have to mm. corral a whole bunch of people. So I can show you how to warm up your voice. Um, Great. Okay. In, in a couple of different ways. Um, the first way is a little bit, silly and the second way is a little bit sillier but look <laughs> you just got to you just got to commit just got to commit okay all right can i stay yes. seated yes you yes absolutely okay. stay seated, stay seated. Got it. um right. you could probably do this in the car on the way to a gig um or an event if you can do it with one hand otherwise i would recommend doing it with with two hands to start so you need to put two fingers on each side of your like lower part of your cheek and you're going to push your lips together. Now you're going to try and do this without laughing. Oh, um, I'm already laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to be like this. All right. So <laughs> what you're going to do is, is, is this. You're going to push your lips together and you're going to make this buzzing sound. 
Don't worry about like spitting on over on everything because it's just just go with it. Am I doing that? Am I got it? Yeah, yeah. And then when you get confident doing that, just do a little oh. hum. So you're like, you've got to. It's got to be on voice. You've got to make a little sound at the same time. Um, if you're struggling, try not to laugh and try and relax your chin. <laughs> I'm not sure I can do this driving. Because you need to, yeah, well, if you, if you can do driving with one hand, well, eventually the goal is to do it without, like, without putting your fingers there. Um, so you will, you'll be able to, you know, have a cup of coffee and drive. But, um, but the goal is to kind of push your, push, your, push your cheeks forward so you're relaxing your lips and then just go. I think that might be our colour picture. What do you reckon? So All good. Right. <laughs> You'll get that. You'll get it. It might take a little bit of little bit of practice. Another one that you can do <laughs> is um is even more annoying as that uh, more annoying than that one is to really try and make your voice as nasal as possible. So like you can talk with an American accent and you can be really like nah, nah, like that. Like, you know, just I don't know, just say something really annoying with a really, but you sound really like nasal tone. Really nasal, it just goes up and I think I think might be an awesome cover voice yeah yeah maybe put my voicemail i put my voicemail on yeah 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 so that's really embarrassing we just did that we just did that but if you if you do that that's going to help you warm up your voice um maybe you know on the way in the car you can just just do a little bit not when i'm like laying out some outfits ready to do some bridal dress shots no not then Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a little bit of a little bit of nya nya will 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 uh will warm will warm you up. Um so good. <laughs> I'll I'll leave you to practice that one. <laughs> yeah, it might be my new signature move, I think, at the start of a wedding shoot. I can see that working. Yeah. I'll do it in, I'll do it in the <laughs> start. <laughs> That's actually really helpful because I smile all the time when I'm shooting mm -hmm. an event because I'm behind the camera trying to generate the smile from the people. So I'm smiling. They can't even see my face, idiot, mm -hmm. but I'm still doing it. And at the end of the event, I'm like, so now I can just come in and do these ones. And it sort of relaxes your face. Well, that's good for, um, it's good for warming up your voice very, very gently. The, the other way that you can do it is actually to get a straw. I don't have a straw for oh. you, but you can yeah. just get a straw and just like... Um, make a little like a, like a humming noise with a straw in your mouth. So, um, yeah. and, and that creates a similar sort of um, pressure uh, on your vocal cords um, to warm you up. So similarly do that on the way home. So when you're, when you're oh, at the end of the cool night, down. you're tough. Yes, absolutely. Cool down. At the end of the night, really tired. Your voice is just like, ah, oh, I'm sorry. You're like hoarse and yelling at people and telling them to <laughs> get out of the show. Smile, you bastard, smile. <laughs> Yeah. Smile. Um, <laughs> I mean, just do do that little like that buzzing, either with a straw or with your cheeks or just whatever. Um, just to that will cool your voice down on the way home. Um, so that okay. that hopefully you super. Don't worry about the nine yards on the way home. Just do the <laughs> just do that like that buzzing. So it's kind of like when you and, get pulled over for an RBT with a straw, but you just keep yeah. the straw, and you can just keep yeah. going. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Perfect. Be... That's a great uh, way to remember when to do what. I like it. <laughs> RBT on the way home. <laughs> well, Josie, thank you so much. You yeah. have taught me uh, a hell of a lot about music uh, already and not least my vocal cords for corralling that group shot we all know and love. Um, I can't wait to see you and Tim either playing or sending some artists our way to the events because it makes our life a whole lot easier when the music is good and, of course, for all the guests as well. So thank you for being on The Helen Show and I will see you again soon. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Take care. See you Thanks. soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.